So good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the first digital episode of our virtual business forum. This forum, this virtual business forum is designed to discuss relevant economic topics in the period we are going through. As its name tells, and because of the pandemic, this forum will take place virtually. In the coming weeks and months, we will uh, talk about various topics related to economic development, private sector development, small and medium enterprises, digitalization, investments, export, startup, and so on. But today, in the first episode of the Virtual Business Forum, we are going to discuss about the impact of the pandemic on the private sector and digitalization in Kosovo. In the first part of this episode, we will present the results of a, of a research study conducted by Project Access to see what impact is COVID-19 having on the private sector. Uh, and in the second part, uh, we will take, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, take the discussion further by talking to a group of uh, experts about the results of this study and about the prevailing uh, situation in the private sector in our country. But uh, before we start, uh, please uh, let me just say a few words about the project Access. Uh, Access is a project that is financed by the Austrian uh, Development Corporation. It's uh, co-financed by the, by the Kosovo government and it's implemented by ETSIX, the, the company I represent. Uh, this project aims at uh, supporting the digital transformation in Kosovo, if we are to you know, define it in a single sentence. There are five activities uh, that are being implemented as part of this project, starting with uh, uh, the electronic identification, authentication and trust services. Here we are um, uh, focusing on increasing business efficiency uh, through the implementation and application of the, uh, so to say, digital signature and authentication and trust services. And we are currently working on the legal side of it and also on the technical side, which means we are also conducting a feasibility study to see how ADAS can uh, be implemented in Kosovo. The second activity deals with um, um, establishing a so-called founder service in uh, the Kosovo Business Registration Agency that is uh, designed to uh, help uh, the provision of digital services for startups, uh, micro companies, uh, small and medium enterprises, and so on, and uh, which is basically there to uh, help the entire uh, uh, business startup phase, but also further business development uh, phases. The third activity is uh, the Digital Empowerment Initiative, which we are uh, implementing with uh, Kosovo Investment and Enterprise Support Agency, KESA. And we are helping here uh, the digital transformation of, of uh, uh, small and medium enterprises uh, through targeted business digitalization services. Uh, in the fourth activity, we are supporting the market access of Kosovo micro, small and medium enterprises through expert promotion activities. And last but not least, we need consulting, we need consultants, we need consulting, consulting and digitalization services. That's why we are supporting the quality improvement of business digitalization services in Kosovo through, uh, uh, for example, uh, establishing certification mechanisms. These are, in a nutshell, and really in just a few words, the activities of, of the project Access. Now, um, I would like to, to introduce first the participants to, to, to this forum. First of all, uh, I have here with me uh, Mr. Thomas Obelholzner, who is Deputy Director of the Austrian Institute for SME Research in Vienna, and who will present the results of uh, the study. Please, Thomas, just raise your hand so that we see you. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Then uh, other participants who will uh, 
join us later in the discussion panel are Arsim uh, Aziri from the Austrian Development Agency, Kreshnik Thashi from KESA, Melita Umeraga from Melita and Partners, Hamas Morina from Access, and uh, Durim Hoja also from Access. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Uh, and for the viewers, uh, just a side note, you can, of course, be part of the discussion by asking your questions uh, to the panelists uh, through our chat service. So now, without a further ado, I'd like to invite Thomas uh, to present the results of the study on behalf of the Access project. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Quitting. And uh, hello to everyone um, on the forum and uh, the entire audience. Um, may I ask you to enable uh, the screen sharing? Um, it's enabled. It's enabled, okay. So, switch to the, okay. So, um, well, um, the decision was taken to um, uh, conduct a, a study um, among Kosovo SMEs um, because um, since uh, spring. Uh, excuse me, Thomas, yeah. to, to interrupt you. We cannot see the, 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 the screen that you're sharing. Cannot, make cannot sure. see it? No, at least I can't see it. I don't know. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Fine. Okay, so um, as I said, that study, um, uh, what the decision was taken to con conduct that study because uh, uh, since uh, spring uh, um, uh, this year, the situation, um, the economic conditions, uh, of course, changed uh, drastically due to the COVID-19 uh, crisis, um, which spread to, um, well, practically um, um, uh, the entire world. Um, so it was important uh, for the access project uh, and um, for the interventions um, which were um, planned and, and designed in the framework of the access project um, to understand what the uh, uh, current conditions are, um, to understand, to, to collect evidence on, um, on how uh, SMEs are doing in that uh, uh, situation of crisis. Um, and uh, to use the study and to use the information in order to, um, you know, inform uh, the uh, the design of the interventions of the access uh, project and uh, to understand uh, whether or not uh, any changes or adaptations um, uh, to the uh, interventions would be uh, necessary. Um, on what the focus uh, of the intervention sh should be. So um, that was basically um, the aim of the study. There was a focus on um, uh, the impact and, and the status of, of digitalization activities uh, among SMEs, but the study also investigated uh, about uh, more general support needs of SMEs. Um, I won't go into detail um, uh, in terms of the more general support needs, but focus in this presentation on the impact of the of the COVID nineteen crisis and on uh, the situation in terms of uh, digitalization activities um, among SMEs. Um, the uh, so. The uh, study methodology, just uh, in a nutshell, so for you to understand uh, what has been done. Um, the study is a survey-based study. Um, a survey was conducted among 408 uh, SMEs. So that means basically 
um, because of the size structure of the accessible uh, business sector that was basically micro enterprises and uh, small enterprises. Um, the survey was a random survey basically um, with a few um, uh, provisions in order to have um, a minimum quota, for example, female enterprises and um, and and a few and a few um, other types of enterprises. But basically, it was a uh, a random survey um, among, as I said, uh, uh, more than four hundred uh, enterprises. The survey period is uh, was July twenty twenty. So this is, of course, um, important uh, because to understand and 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 to know. Um, in order to um, uh, judge about the survey results because we are in a very dynamic situation um, uh, situation in terms of the, um, the health situation but also um, the, the measures which are taken by, by governments are, uh, are uh, changing um, uh, on, on a frequent basis. So it's important to understand when the survey has been conducted. Um, the survey methodology was face-to-face -face interviews um, with uh, basically the uh, enterprise managers and enterprise owners. And it was implemented by a specialized uh, uh, market research uh, um, uh, company, um, especially the field work and the um, analysis results. So let's go now to the, uh, to the key results. Um, Just give an overview on what the uh, uh, what COVID nineteen crisis means for companies. Um, there, uh, we see from this uh, figure that um, the the impacts were very very significant, and a very very large share of uh, companies was uh, affected in uh, different ways. Um, especially uh, the the most important. Uh, um, impact was of course on the sales and turnover side. So what we can see here is that um, approximately 80% uh, of companies uh, in Kosovo said that there was a negative impact uh, on the part of the um, uh, on, on, on the sales side and, and turnover. We will go into a bit more detail uh, in a minute in this respect, but not only the sales side was affected, but um, also there were, uh, of course, a need to adjust and change uh, the organization of work, e.g., you know, for... Excuse me, Thomas, we lost you for a second and okay. uh, we can't see the screen anymore. Can you hear me? Yes. You can't see the screen? Yes. Okay. Um, so I reshare the screen maybe. Am I there again? Yes, we can see you now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Um, um, so um, there were also effects, uh, as I said, uh, on the part of, of, of work organization, but um, uh, also very significant effects. As you can see, two thirds of, of companies were affected uh, on the supply side. This means that um, um, supply chains were disrupted. Um, especially uh, small economies, um, which are very reliant on, uh, on um, external exchanges with other countries, are of course uh, very affected in this in this uh, respect. So many company um, uh, companies in in Kosovo were uh, also negatively affected because of difficulties in uh, obtaining raw materials or other inputs. Um, at the employment side, um, we see that the the overall employment level, so to speak, um, was also affected. Um, more than 50% uh, said that uh, there was a negative effect on the uh, employment level, but I will go into a bit more detail um, 
uh, on this aspect uh, um, shortly. Um, as far as export is concerned, um, of course, only a very, very tiny share of uh, Kosovo SMEs are active in export. In the survey, this was 5% of the companies um, that were active in exporting. And um, that was also um, uh, th those companies uh, which are active in exporting, um, all of them uh, experienced a decline in exports. So, um, as mentioned, a bit more uh, detail in terms of the, um, of course, very important impact on the sales and turnover side of, uh, of, um, uh, of companies. What you can see from, uh, from this figure is that uh, if you add the percentages of the um, three uh, bars at the bottom, then you arrive at approximately 95%. 95% uh, of companies which uh, actually had a decrease in uh, sales in the period from March to June 2020 compared to the same period in 2019. So it's a bit the more specific question compared to the first one. Um, and we see that uh, here the impact uh, or the negative impact is even a bit more widespread. Um, so 95% of the companies um, um, experienced decrease. Um, but is, what is even a bit more uh, worrying is that um, the decreases were very, very high for a large part of the companies. More than 50% um, reported that the decrease in that period from March to June 2020 uh, was uh, more than 50% compared to the, uh, uh, to the 2019 uh, period. So uh, overall, the, uh, the impact and the effect on the negative impact on, on the sales levels um, were very, very significant. Um, what are now the reactions of, of SMEs to the crisis? Um, what you can see from, uh, from this figure here is that the most uh, the most uh, frequent, the most widespread reaction was to reduce um, uh, the, the, the working hours. Um, this was much more, uh, much more widespread than um, uh, dismissing or you know, laying off people at all. So that is, of course, um, a positive. It has been uh, preferred to shorten the working hours over um, uh, you know, just firing people. Um, what you can see is um, in, the, in, in the middle of the, of the figure, um, there's a number uh, saying 60% have reduced the number of employees. Um, actually, um, if we also uh, consider those businesses which have been closed, for example, um, and uh, partly also uh, they, those who, um, uh, who did not hire uh, to the same extent, for example, you know, construction companies who did not hire to the same extent, then we see that overall 25% of SMEs uh, have a lower level of in, in headcount as due to the crisis. So, um, but still, uh, compared to, uh, to, to the number of companies or to the, to the high percentage of companies uh, that experienced a decrease in sales, um, we see that uh, many companies tried to keep their staff as far as possible to shorten working hours. Um, so the negative impact on sales did not translate uh, to the same significant extent uh, to the, uh, uh, to the um, uh, employment levels. Um, apart from uh, employment related measures, we see that um, uh, also a high number of, of companies stopped investment plans. So 24% of companies stopped um, th their investments um, and um, also a 
approximately 20% um, uh, reduced or stopped the, uh, the purchase of, of, uh, of inputs. Um, so um, only a, a, a very small share of companies um, did not take um, any measures. Um, what is also interesting maybe is that uh, we can see that 8% of uh, the SMEs have closed the business. So that might be temporarily or it might be um, um, uh, uh, on the longer term. Um, but uh, yeah, 8% is a significant number, I think, um, of, of companies uh, who, who stop the business operations. Um, what we can also see is that um, at the bottom of the, of the figure, um, the percentage of companies which tried to act a bit more proactively or uh, to adapt the business models or to uh, go into digitalization tools and to communities which um, are also there in the, in the crisis situation, uh, that share is very, very small. So we see that um, um, overall uh, companies have of course, and understandably, reacted very defensively by reducing, by cutting, um, uh, and only a very small share at this stage, at least, um, have um, uh, taken a bit more proactive approach um, and, uh, and uh, for example, with investments into digital tools or uh, adapting uh, their business models or, or range of products. And, and things like that. So um, crisis always uh, also implies uh, opportunities and, and possibilities um, to, um, to adapt uh, what one has done, but this is at this stage at least um, uh, a very large, very tiny uh, share of companies so far. Um, if we continue to the next one, uh, then uh, we see that one reason uh, for the fact that um, the, uh, uh, the negative economic impact did not really fully translate to the uh, employment level is that um, many uh, companies uh, have uh, benefited from uh, a compensation of, the, of monthly salary expenses. Um, so this is an overview here of the um, uh, government support measures uh, in relation to COVID-19 which have been uh, used uh, by SMEs. So you see that clearly um, the, uh, uh, that uh, compensation of, of monthly uh, um, employee salaries is the most important uh, measure and has been uh, used by, by very many um, uh, SMEs. Um, other measures uh, have been used to only a, um, a very small um, extent. Um, the second bar in the, uh, in the figure says that uh, approximately one third of the companies um, uh, have not benefited from any, uh, from any measures. Um, and that share is a little bit higher in rural areas uh, and uh, in, for companies um, um, uh, with eating minority owners. I mean, there are not so very significant differences, but there are some differences here. So we can see that um, especially um, for, for example, in the urban areas, um, there was, I think, a percentage like 28%. Um, uh, the uh, the average is 32 percent, and the rural areas 36 percent of non-benefiters. Um, however, of those uh, that benefited and, and used uh, the measures, still 36 percent uh, were a bit critical about the effectiveness of the measures. So, um, more than one third of those that used the measures um, said that. Uh, uh, on a sustainable a sustainable level, um, they they are doubtful about uh, whether the uh, the measures can help them really to survive uh, uh, on the long term. Um, so, 
but still, uh, what we can see is I think that that that, that the measures definitely uh, helped uh, to um, uh, to prevent uh, the crisis uh, translating to a larger extent on the uh, on the employment side. Um, so, what do SMEs expect um, in terms of recovery? So, um, well. I think we have to be aware that this uh, question has been asked in July. So um, you have to count the month here and, and, and the time uh, onwards from July. So, uh, but still um, what we can see is that um, a very large uh, share of SMEs, I would say it's approximately two thirds do not expect a recovery um, uh, still this year. So most of them uh, uh, think that it's only uh, in 2021 or even maybe uh, in the, in the um, later parts of 2021 that um, the economic conditions and especially the sales at the sales side would return to the pre-corona levels for each company. So. Overall, um, uh, that means that, that companies are uh, still uh, uh, pessimistic, of course, um, especially hotels, restaurants, personal services, and uh, these um, uh, type of, of industries are, are the most pessimistic one in terms of, um, of expectations um, in regard of, 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 of a speedy recovery. Um, I continue to um, the analysis of the of the overall um, attitudes and and strategic goals of, of companies. Understandably, um, uh, considering the very difficult uh, situation, um, in terms of uh, strategy and and business goals, SMEs uh, at the moment mainly focus on simply surviving and on uh, trying to reduce costs wherever that is possible. So we see that uh, more than 50% say of themselves that they are uh, just uh, striving or struggling to survive and just to maintain on the market as far as possible and try to, to reduce costs. Whereas um, other strategies like, for example, um, uh, of course, growing, like improving quality or um, things like that are of course um, um, not that widespread um, because growth opportunities are certainly uh, not there. Um, but overall it's of course a certain um, uh, difficult um, and, and more, more passive and defensive uh, strategic position which uh, companies um, take at the moment. Um, what is uh, concerning is that um, more than 10%, 11% are considering closing or, uh, the business. So I think that's also a, uh, a significant number. One tenth of, of all companies are uh, really considering uh, closing the business is a very significant um, uh, number, of course, and is also illustrating um, the difficult situation companies are in at the moment. Um, now turning to uh, specifically the uh, situation uh, in regard of digitalization. Um, of course, uh, digitalization is something which is uh, not, it's not just came up in, in, the, in the context of, of, of COVID, but it's, it's a long-term uh, trend which, uh, um, which, is a, which is pervasive um, all over the, um, in, in all areas of society actually. Um, and and in all countries, of course, and um, is there's there's of course certain uh, uh, need to to, um, uh, to continuously increase digitalization activities and, and, and levels. But of course, what we can see from from the um, um, uh, positions and attitudes of SMEs vis-a-vis um, -vis, uh, digitalization at the moment is that. Um, 
of course, uh, the efforts uh, at the moment remain a bit um, uh, a bit modest. Um, we see that um, only 18% um, of SMEs at the moment have any plans to develop further or to, to, um, to, to progress in the area of digitalization in their companies for uh, next years. So um, that's, that's a, uh, a share uh, which I think um, in, 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 in a medium term has to be, has to be raised because um, digitalization is uh, important for companies uh, in the coming years um, to, to keep competitive uh, on the market. And uh, only also a very small share of, of companies, as you can see, um, are specifically engaging in digi digitalization activities um, with a view to, um, to tackling the COVID-19 situation. Um, so at the moment, uh, digitalization efforts um, uh, are, of course, uh, uh, a bit reluctant. Um, and um, uh, ho however, it, that, that, should, that should be, uh, that, that there should be measures to, to, to accelerate and to, to encourage uh, companies to be active in that area a bit more. Um, if we go more specifically to uh, the current use and potential of, of, of digital and, and, and ICT tools, um, as it is at the moment, and we see that um, uh, aspects like internet connection or smartphones are actually used by, of course, a very large uh, share of companies um, and other things like, you know, robots or um, um, computer -aided design or computer aided manufacturing are, of course, used to a very low extent um, because this is only relevant for maybe larger manufacturing companies. Um, and so that, that's, I think, a typical situation, which is maybe not, uh, uh, not particular for, for, uh, for Kosovo SMEs. Um, but what is the most interesting here is maybe um, uh, the percentages which are in the middle column, um, because those are, these are those companies which say that they are interested in advancing in that area, and they say that they're interested in applying um, these things a bit more. So, for example, you see that 31% of companies want to uh, uh, do more uh, with their websites, want to do uh, invest in their websites, want to advance at that level. 27%, um, for example, say that they want to um, uh, improve in terms of um, uh, document management systems. Um, also, an, another uh, uh, important thing is web shops, for example. Um, so I think these are the areas which are uh, those areas where there is a significant interest of companies to improve in that area, to use that more. And the usage at the moment is not so widespread. So it's uh, there are limited percentages. You see that, for example, um, say cloud services are used by only 3%, but there's a significant percentage of companies that are interested in doing more in that area. Um, um, yeah, the same uh, for e-government applications, for example. E-government is not used to a, to a very large extent at the moment, but there is a significant percentage of companies which are actually interested in doing more in that area. So these are, you know, so to speak, areas of potentials um, where where companies um, are interested uh, in and um, and want to do more and uh, and invest. Um, however, there are certain obstacles, of course, um, and um, of course, in the difficult situations at the moment, as I said, investments are. Um, um, uh, are reduced, uh, investment plans are, uh, are decreasing, and uh, money is, of course, um, not available to the same extent. Um, there might be difficulties in finding finance because, of course, the risk situation for any investors has also increased, so um, it's also more difficult for investors to, uh, to provide uh, money. Um, basically, um, 
what we looked at here is the what are the main obstacles um, in terms of um, which are preventing um, a further digitalization and, and digitalization activities in, in companies. Um, so we see that there are, say, three to four main obstacles, which are um, which are very significant differences. Not so much the, the, of course, as one could expect, the the most important or, or largest obstacle is of course costs. So that means money, um, which is uh, necessary to um, purchase services and to purchase um, also hardware, for example, or whatever. Um, we can see that. Um, Overall, 75% of companies say that there's, that is an obstacle and 33% uh, for 33 is a high obstacle. But it's not only the costs, but it's also the skills. And there are two types of skills. Uh, on the one hand, there's the user skills. Um, so because if you have um, new ICT and digital tools, then you also need the skills among your employees so that these um, tools can be uh, used and applied. But you also uh, need uh, specialized skills. For example, you need a technician, an ICT technician, who can, for example, maintain the thing and uh, adapt it or uh, um, reprogram things and so on. So these type of skills are both uh, uh, important. Um, there's also um, a perceived lack of, um, of um, I would say, expert services. Um, so on the one hand, technology suppliers, but also consultants or service providers, which are externals and can help uh, companies to to implement um, uh, ICT tools. Um, so that is also um, a perceived uh, obstacles and uh, obstacle. Um, and finally, uh, a significant aspect is also cyber data protection in the in, 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 in the broad sense. So data protection. Uh, is of course um, uh, also a risk for companies, and um, decisions have to be taken. Uh, you know uh, where data is stored, whether this is in Europe, in the U.S., or, or whatever, um, and how accessible it is, and, and how um, uh, how uh, easily it could be accessed from people who sh shouldn't do that. Um, so. Um, many concerns on the side of SMEs uh, in terms of, of data protection. So that's um, uh, also something which uh, um, has to be, uh, um, where SMEs need some assistance uh, in order to take decisions um, and, um, and uh, be aware of, of, of options they, they have and of activities and measures they could take in this respect. Um, finally, um, what we can see from the last, from the from the bottom bar, is that there is a lack of awareness, um, especially in terms of um, what are the possible benefits or, or application possibilities of, of digital tools. Um, so um, we see that quite a number of, of SMEs um, do not really see how to use it. So there has to be uh, a bridge between the technical tools and how they can be used. Um, and um, I think this is also something uh, which needs to be addressed um, because there are maybe excellent tools available, but how they can be used and how they can be utilized and for what purposes and in what areas um, is not immediately clear uh, to, to small business owners. Uh, so there needs to be kind of a translation service um, maybe by experts, whatever, who can uh, help um, uh, explaining to small business owners how um, digital tools uh, could be used to the benefit of companies because they don't use it not, on, not because it's fancy or because everyone says you have to digitalize. They would only use it if it, there's an immediate effect on um, on business numbers and sales for it, especially on, on, on the sales side. Um, so um, yeah, what, what also has been investigated in the study was uh, the main needs for, uh, for advisory services among uh, SMEs. Um, uh, so there, there is what we can see from this figure, there is a significant uh, 
uh, need and 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 wish of of uh, desire of, of companies uh, to uh, to be uh, assisted in terms of of certain expert advisory services in various areas. Um, the most important uh, need articulated by by companies is uh, in the marketing and sales area. Um, this is n not necessarily or 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 um, um, explicitly connected to digitalization, but these are areas um, where it is clear that um, digitalization uh, can come in because there is an interest uh, uh, among companies in improving the marketing and sales side, in improving the accounting side or controlling um, um, uh, aspects of the company um, and or, or business planning, for example. And uh, I think these are the areas which can be connected with uh, also the question, what can digitalization tools uh, do and uh, how can digitalization tools help uh, in these areas like marketing and sales, accounting and, and so on. So I think digitalization and uh, these other functional areas of companies have to be uh, very well and explicitly um, uh, connected. Um, so to sum up and, and uh, to finalize, to wrap up uh, some of the, uh, of the results, um, what, what we can see overall is that, um, of course, there's a very uh, significant negative impact of the, uh, of the COVID uh, situation on businesses. Um, this is, of course, uh, not specific to Kosovo. This is uh, happening uh, in, in basically all over the world at the moment. Um, and uh, that SMEs are, uh, of course, understandably reacting uh, very uh, defensively. They have to, the priority is surviving, of course, at the moment and uh, uh, reducing uh, costs, reducing investments, cutting staff, or even stopping business operations. Um, but at, uh, uh, governments are, are uh, all over the world, uh, you know, the, the first priority is uh, keeping businesses on the market. So, uh, um, you know, compensating for losses, uh, helping them to um, survive on the market um, with, um, uh, with relevant measures. Um, still, at some point, uh, the, the strategy uh, at the level of the companies, but also at the level of governments, has to uh, shift gradually, at least from defensive measures and uh, survival mode into um, helping businesses to find new opportunities, adopt their business models, um, and uh, find new market opportunities. And uh, there needs to be a gradual shift from a more defensive approach to a more um, offensive approach, considering that uh, many aspects of the current situation might continue for a longer time. Um, so at the moment, companies are exploring new opportunities only very rarely, very seldomly, but there needs to be um, uh, a gradual shift. And in that area, I think uh, interventions and, and support is also needed uh, for SMEs uh, from the policy side um, to, um, to have a more encouraging approach, um, to support innovation um, and, and to, to, to help uh, SMEs finding um, new market opportunities. Um, and what, what we can see is that digitalization is, of course, um, an, a very important component which could be harnessed uh, in this respect. Um, digitalization can help um, changing the business model adapting it to the current situation in a better way. And um, uh, so digitalization is definitely, maybe not the only one, but uh, a very important component in, um, you know, uh, in, in using a more encouraging um, um, strand of, of, uh, of support policy. And that includes, uh, of course, um, raising the awareness of opportunities, and supporting uh, companies, and by addressing the, the relevant obstacles which were mentioned. Um, so that means, of course, on the one hand, money, but also um, 
helping them with expert services and, and with skills provision. And um, probably with a focus on, on those enterprises um, where, uh, of course, digitalization can really make a difference. So that's not necessarily something which <clears throat> uh, needs to be uh, done for each and every company, um, but um, uh, because digitalization uh, opportunities are, of course, uh, uh, different between industries and uh, certain fields which are uh, are more interesting for companies maybe so has to be a certain uh, focus and uh, the, the needs and opportunities have to be addressed and um, yeah and, and surely as we've seen that there is a um, well significant uh, need in terms of advisory services and, and, and expert services and I think especially in times where companies need to gradually you know change and adapt the business models there is a certain need to uh, to um, to support them or to um, uh, accompany them um, with um, respective services um, for them to, to 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 adapt to new models and to, to um, and, and to manage uh, uh, to manage change so yeah I think I'm uh, so now at the end, um, use much more time than planned. I'm sorry for that. And I would like to thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much, Thomas. Thank you um, for sharing the results. Um, actually, um, unfortunately, uh, some of them are uh, very disturbing. Um, and uh, we see that the decrease in sales, for example, uh, did not translate, as you said, uh, to the same amount to the uh, decrease in unemployment. But having in mind that the crisis is still ongoing, that um, basically what we are uh, re uh, presenting here is only a snapshot of, uh, uh, of, of the developments uh, until July. Uh, and also having in mind that the government support uh, mentioned those 170 euros and so on, has basically stopped for the time being. I fear that um, uh, you know uh, the, the further impact on this can be much more um, severe, and the the delay in in recovery uh, will uh, most probably be uh, rather uh, significant. So, to to talk about these issues, we have uh, maybe some twenty to twenty five minutes left. I'd like to. Uh, um, simply address a few questions to, to, to the panelists and uh, once again I have here uh, Arsim Aziri from ADA, Australian Development Agency, Kreshnik Thaci from KESA, Merita Imeraga, a businesswoman, Hamas Morina from Ethics and uh, Access Project and Durim Hoja from Access and Access, uh, Access Project. So um, let's let's maybe uh, go through some of the topics here, and um, like to to start by uh, by, by uh, asking a business person, uh, Medita, uh, you are a successful entrepreneur in Kosovo. Uh, so, uh, how do you, uh, in a nutshell, uh, interpret the, the, the presented results? Yeah. First of all, uh, thank you for having me here and uh, talking for s and having a possibility to talk for such an important topic like uh, digital transformation. Uh, the results are here. Um, basically, main, uh, basically, uh, it's not something new. We know that our businesses in Kosovo uh, uh, somehow do not see the digital transformation like an investment but mainly they see it like a kind of uh, expense. Let's say um, um, during crisis, uh, in order that one business survive, they need to be liquid. So liquidity is, is the main factor. And in order to, have, uh, to be liquid, they need to have uh, a cash flow forecast. And in order to have a cash flow forecast, they need information how their business is doing. So um, what happens in Kosovo mainly is that businesses see the information or let's say uh, investing in digital uh, transformation, mainly a kind of uh, something that it's not for them. 
because uh, let's say having um, having an accounting system well cloud uh, software for accounting means that they will have real-time information and real-time to uh, access of data which will help them uh, make a better forecast as we saw here uh, mainly uh, the investment on technology and digital transformation is the last thing that businesses are are thinking about which in fact should be completely uh, different since uh, let's say during COVID, the businesses that already made some investments in digital transformation, they've done better because they were ready to work remotely. And in this case, they just changed the location and their business operations were ongoing. And since they were ready to uh, somehow, let's say, invest in, in, in digital transformation, they were ready to think about uh, finding new ways of uh, increasing their sales, like uh, investing in e-commerce. But uh, which is the number of these businesses in Kosovo? It is very, very small. So uh, uh, how I see the results here is that really uh, we need to work very hard in order to make um, aware the businesses that digital transformation is it's for their benefit. And it is, uh, something that it will come not just at the time of crisis but it's something that it will be like we are saying the new normal for uh, having a different business models in 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 order to uh survive but as well to uh, open new sales channels but now uh how the situation is for for uh mainly for micro businesses and smes in kosovo is that uh, accounting and um, financial information is being seen like uh, only to fulfill a compliance, only to fulfill a tax regulation and not something that is for the benefit of business. So uh, until the businesses becomes aware that investing in digital transformation is something that will help them grow and is an investment, it's not an expense, then uh, somehow it will be very, very hard to make them uh, uh, somehow, how to say, to uh, go on that way mm -hmm. and to uh, be more tech, uh, tech mm -hmm. uh, and business, uh, modern business yeah. entrepreneurs. Melita, you're uh, also an accountant and you mentioned the importance of financial uh, figures and financial information in managing the, the business. Uh, let me ask you, you're also active in different sectors. How do you see uh, the, the overall uh, you know, uh, current state of, of private sector from your view as an entrepreneur? Uh, yes, uh, so we have uh, more than 10 years working uh, in Kosovo and in the region on uh, implementing different uh, financial systems uh, and a lot of, uh, let's say, CRM and other modules. And uh, as well working in different industries like manufacturing, like construction, mm -hmm. uh, education, and cetera. And uh, mainly there are two, uh, from my view, there are two different groups of businesses. The ones that they see uh, the investment on digital transformation as a benefit and the ones that are not aware for, for uh, the goods that digital transformation uh, uh, has. So uh, we have a lot of work on doing, uh, on working on awareness and education. Like let's say uh, mainly our customers in the beginning, they uh, do not somehow uh, know the real benefits so they understand what they have bought until uh, uh, until uh, they do not know what they've bought until we are done with implementation and later mm -hmm. on they see the benefits mm -hmm. and from the consultant part uh, we need to be very close with them in order to make them uh, feel more uh, somehow uh, secure that we are there and we will help them mm -hmm. uh, uh, to make the whole the whole uh, implementation of the project uh, work. 
but uh, still there is a, somehow the resistance of, of uh, the, the change. So they do not uh, accept the change uh, very, very easy. So uh, there are many, diff for my side, is that we need to work on awareness, on educating them, and, and uh, helping them uh, understand that uh, this is for their best. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And a very quick question now, you um, probably as a consultant and as an accountant, of course, have, um, uh, you know, uh, first-hand information on, 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 on what's going on uh, in the market and also on uh, support programs. Uh, do you think, a uh, very straightforward question, do you think uh, that the government is uh, doing or has done enough for businesses? Uh, now, uh, I will <laughs> just uh, reply, I will answer as an owner, as a business owner. <coughs> very, very, uh, very, very much has to be done on this direction. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not a huge benefit for businesses to postpone the, the uh, payment of taxes. Or in our case, like we work in consultant industry, in consulting industry, and our main asset are our people. So uh, we uh, invest all the time in our um, team, and we were somehow um, trying to have the team be with us all the time and not to take any measure for sending them home or reducing hours, as it was. Uh, in, in the report presented by Mr. Thomas. So um, 170 euro for, for our uh, staff as, as a measure was nothing. As well, uh, postponement of, of taxes is not such a big um, help for businesses. Businesses need direct help, like something that uh, is for uh, directly uh, benefit to the business and uh, to be more close with us. Let's say uh, we still, uh, government still hasn't uh, make all the payments uh, coming from, from emergency uh, measures. And now this, still we don't know how COVID is going to uh, uh, be in, in next period. So uh, measures are so far not, uh, not as it should be and as Thank the you. business needs are. Thank you, Melita, uh, for your um, uh, insights. You. And uh, I would like to, we have a, a government representative here. I, would, uh, I don't want to, you know, put any blame on you, Kreshnik. I would just like to know your views or especially uh, to, to gain some insights on, on what uh, uh, KSA is currently doing uh, to help the private sector in these extremely difficult times and, and uh, also if uh, there's a way to do more and if there's, because certainly there's a need to do more, but is there a way also to do more? Well, thank you very much, Kutim. Thomas, um, I'd like to applaud you for your presentation. The, 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 the data were, um, I would say, promising from the government perspective. Promising in the sense that they will tell us where we should concentrate as a government, what are some of the incentives and policies that we have to undertake in the necessary to improve our business or economy. And we are aware of these data because um, a lot of studies has been done by the government, especially these months. Um, a lot of data have been calculated and discussed within internal institutions. Um, also, some of the things were mentioned by Melita uh, regarding the COVID effects and what are some of the things that we need to do in order to recover our economy. Well, Kiesa has been actively engaged with different institutions in the Republic of Kosovo. We have met a lot of businesses. We do understand their concerns. We do understand the needs of the market. In this regard, we have tried somehow, together with our different partners, to tailor projects that would benefit, especially during this time. Since the beginning of the crisis in the in the March of this year, um, we were in a way, um, in a way, you know, like a like a foggy foggy time where we didn't know where to start or where to catch. But uh, after getting along with it, we understood that we have we must take some measures in order 
um, to present them to our businesses so that businesses can see them and touch them and in a way benefit from these measures. Um, the, the, the government measures that were taken, of course, they're going to they're gonna be presented in there and businesses need to know of these measures. But in this sense, Kisa was not satisfied with those measures. That is why we have come up with a draft which was sent to the National Economic Council from our side based on the discussions that we have had with the private sector and based on the, the concerns that we received from the private sector, we have undertaken all those question marks and all those you know, um, challenges that businesses have faced during this time and collected them on a one to two pages document and we will be also, also um, presenting them again to the government so that the government uh, on the, um, the draft law on economic recovery will include them and of course pass the law so that the government uh, will have the chance to put it in front of the private sector and the private sector can touch them. The other part where we worked was um, a project with the, with the Access and the Essex. We presented uh, about two months ago a project so-called uh, digitalization and the um, um, project which project um, was to help businesses to get more attracted to the digitalization softwares, programs, skills, and stuff like that, so that they can, in a way, reduce their looseness in sense of presenting their products in front of the, the customers. I would say the, the data, the data which were received so far was very promising because we understood that the project itself is a project that will help them and tackle all these things that were put by Thomas. And I can tell you 100% because I was involved in the project, 99% of the concerns which were put on the project, on the presentation of Thomas, have been tackled through the project. The project, for example, have tackled the, the internet use, the access on the customers, the digitalization skills, the marketing, the e-commerce, the customer careness, and other types of software and programs that businesses should do in order to improve their, their business clientele so that they can not reduce their um, income throughout selling their products in the market, but they would have increased the, the sales of their, of their products. And we're aware that the digitalization was very important and it's still going to be important. But after the COVID time, take it as lucky or, or as you wish, but the Access Project was a project which was very tailor-made, who in a way we have sensed the feeling that the crisis will come in a way and that is why we have to introduce a project which will tackle these kind of things. That is why we believe that the, the outcome of the project is going to be very, very, very positive. And we're not going to stop with that because we're going to still um, gather all the monitoring data and the implementation data. We're going to see what are some of the things that has been improved. What are some of the things that we need to include in our new project, which will be introduced together with the, the access project. And of course, we're going to uh, we're going to discuss later on with the with the business community we go, because we cannot all the time um, create programs that are not benefited to the private sector. We're going to have to discuss it with them and see what are some of the things that they would need to more improve in order to get access to the market. As I was telling you, the digitalization uh, by default is one of the most used pro, uh, processes at, uh, at, at this time. And COVID has given us more, uh, let's say, on the attention so that people, that private, uh, uh, private sector, that government needs to improve its services and take them on the level of digitalization. And not all of our services are digitalized, even from the government perspective are not digitalized. We're gonna be still working, not only with access, but all other donors and organizations to help us improve our um, digitalization methods, for example, applying for um, a, a, a grant or a subsidy or something like that, so that all these things, all these small tools can be used throughout the digitalization process. Mm -hmm. Another project that we have been actively engaged is 
um, providing subsidies to the private sector. I'm, I'm sure not everybody is satisfied because there are some certain criterias that they needed to be um, um, completed by, by, by the private sector in order to be, uh, uh, let's say, given a grant. But um, we will still continue to do the next phase. Now we have another project, which is currently an open call in, um, in a newspaper in our website as well. It's the grants for the women entrepreneurs. So all of the women entrepreneurs in Kosovo who has shares more than 51%, they have the chance to apply with a specific project, which will be, of course, manufacturing or all sectors that are relevant to our industry or economy can apply and, um, of course, fulfill the criteria that are put under the public law. We are still interested to continue um, our project with the access because we're gonna we're gonna very soon be accepting the data from the from the business community. See how the implementation process is going. What are some of the obstacles that we have? Um, uh, let's say noticed during the implementation of the project. What are some of the things that we need to improve so that the project can be furthermore developed or move to another level of the improvements. Thank From you. the KSA perspective, I would just say that, yeah. let me just finalize it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, we will be very open to communicate with any business. We will be very open to discuss with business community um, any kind of concerns, any kind of uh, requirements. Of course, we're going to tailor new projects in order to address the challenges of the post-COVID because mm -hmm. we're going to face with that phase as well. And so we will be receiving or we're open to receive any, any kind of comments, questions, or even documents if somebody has done something uh, for the private sector development so that we can include in our strategic documents. Thanks a lot. Sorry for taking Thank you. Time. No, thank you, Kreshnik. Uh, I very much appreciate, you know, uh, you uh, don't see very often uh, government officials with this level of high energy and, and so on in, in you know, uh, fulfilling his, his duties. So thank you very much. And I just need to say I'm very happy that you see, as Thomas said, the crisis as an opportunity, as a chance, and that you're looking, you know, to uh, adapt your existing mechanisms and to um, maybe also add a couple of new mechanisms uh, and to fulfill your role in supporting the private sector development. And I also need to say uh, we had no clue that the, that the crisis was coming. And, but luckily, you know, all uh, the planned activities uh, in, in the project are actually as a result of a, a thorough market analysis that we did um, uh, prior to starting with its uh, implementation. And luckily, uh, basically all of the activities that I mentioned before are related to, to digitalization that also helps, you know, um, uh, manage the impact of, of the pandemic uh, much better. So, um, uh, and, and all of this wouldn't have been, of course, possible without the uh, donor assistance. Uh, the Austrian Development Agency is of one course. of the main part. Big thankful to them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. is one of our ma main partners. We, are, we have been working uh, in the last 15 years uh, with uh, ADA in different uh, private sector development and uh, investment uh, generation projects in uh, Kosovo. So um, uh, that means that donor assistance is, uh, was, of course, always of crucial importance uh, to uh, economic recovery and development of Kosovo. But I trust that also due to the pandemic, the, the importance will uh, increase uh, significantly. So uh, therefore, I would like to, to ask uh, Arsim Aziri, uh, two uh, quick questions. Uh, first, uh, uh, I would like to know how has the pandemic affected your work and activities as a donor in Kosovo? And uh, secondly, uh, do you expect any changes in your long-term strategy? Because uh, you're highly involved not only in uh, private sector development, but also in the higher education sector, which has also been very much affected by the pandemic. Uh, thank you, Kuitim. Uh, again, thanks to Thomas for, for a great presentation and uh, very inspiring words from Kresnik and, of course, view of, of from Melita from the business perspective. Uh, we, we come from the uh, different side, let me call it like that, and uh, we are not uh, regarding the impact of in private sector 
is not we are that we are uh, directly affected, but again, indirectly through our partners and then final beneficiaries, which are the businesses as it, it is presented. Impact to, to us was, was more an organizational uh, aspect that, uh, of course, we had to, to uh, adapt to the situation that uh, most of the cases either uh, be it uh, from work, uh, from home work or uh, uh, mixed. Uh, now we are fully fully back, and uh, but uh, we are we are so to say dependent or or uh, to our partners who are directly working with uh, different uh, 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 partner institutions and in, 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 in two main sectors of ours in education and in private sector development. What we have seen is that. Uh, 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 and we have asked also, uh, uh, same as you did survey, we also did uh, a, a small questions, uh, uh, questionnaire to our partners how uh, COVID has impacted in their work. And, and we have noticed that, uh, that uh, all of our partners, of course, like everybody had to adapt to, to the new uh, circumstances and the situation. But luckily, we, we have seen that most of them, of course, they've had uh, delays in some activities, but they are uh, uh, well coping with the situation, they are adapting and then uh, continuing their work. So in that regard, we don't see a, a significant or a drastic uh, uh, or in danger that all projects will have uh, difficulties in, in the implementation or uh, significant delays. So most of the cases, they, they continue the work and uh, uh, it would be, of course, some extension of activities. But good is that uh, 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 from our uh, perspective office, we, we, this year we managed that with, with uh, thanking to our all uh, partners who are uh, doing their, their main work, that we are uh, fully uh, uh, managing or implementing the plan also in financial terms. So, so this, this is a, a promising uh, uh, thing. Uh, regarding to, to, to the next, second question, uh, in, in long term, of course, we have to, to adapt. And uh, as I said, some of the interventions of the, of the partners are, uh, has to be uh, adapted, but not as a significant. Uh, of course, the, the main priorities will remain as, as it is uh, uh, stated, but in sense of intervention, like uh, uh, Kresnik mentioned, and also from the business perspective, what we see, and also from the findings, what we have seen, maybe another survey has to be done uh, uh, next year to see uh, after, after uh, uh, we, so to say, because this survey covers really the period when it was really locked down, and now we have to see maybe in in few months what what is what was this impact uh, uh, after after six months so this is also uh, important to to find out and uh, the ways ahead but uh, as as uh, all of all of you uh, previously uh, uh, said the the need uh, is there uh, 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 demand is there uh, uh, important is that the government of austria is still uh, uh, ready and uh, committed that we, we continue support and of course we all together that we are around this uh, online table uh, business uh, institutions and us uh, including you as an implementer to find the best ways uh, forward and uh, support the business community uh, thank you, Arsim. Indeed, um, our interventions are always evidence-based, and uh, such surveys can help us, you know, adapt and 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 change uh, uh, those interventions according to to the market needs. And uh, of course, we are happy to have a uh, a partner that that uh, shares this view and also um, is willing and ready to to continue. The provision of, of support in this area. So, um, maybe uh, just to uh, cover some uh, some uh, other aspects of, of of the crisis and of potential uh, changes in the market. I have my two colleagues here, Hamas and and Durim, and um, I'd like to ask them first. Uh, maybe you, Hamas, can you? Uh, Tell me, because we were talking about the government support and so on, uh, what should uh, maybe 
uh, what should the, gov the focus of the government uh, be to, and also of different donor initiatives to, to address the, the negative impact of, of COVID-19? Thank you, Kuitin. Uh, thanks to everybody for their inputs. Uh, maybe just uh, to start by saying that uh, we see that uh, the COVID-19 crisis has severely hit the private sector in Kosovo. As the study reveals, we have 95% of companies that have uh, experienced decrease in sales. Then 25% of SMEs that were forced to dismiss workforce due to the crisis. And uh, also slightly more than 50% of SMEs that are now declaring that they are struggling to survive. Uh, it is therefore obvious that uh, production and servicing capacities of the SMEs will have to be utilized to a greater extent uh, so that they keep their economic activity and maintain the employment levels. Uh, in order to do so, these uh, SMEs need access to markets, they need sales, they need access to customers. Uh, and that's why uh, governments and donors should not only, uh, let me say, focus on providing one-time subsidies or financial assistance in uh, like uh, covering the losses and the running costs, but on the, on the other hand, should follow a more sustainable approach as Thomas and also Milita mentioned, uh, which is supporting the companies to adopt to the new reality, find new business models, find new market opportunities, but also find new ways on how to service the existing customer base. Uh, it is not a secret uh, in revealing because it has been mentioned before that uh, uh, great attention in this uh, sustainable approach should be towards digitalization. Why? Uh, because digitalization can help companies to increase efficiency, be more competitive, and also have closer ties to the customers, but also uh, sell uh, through the use of digital channels, uh, which is a very important aspect as we have seen during the times when we had uh, movement restrictions. Uh, that there is a need for digitalization, we also see from the study. Let me mention just two figures. Uh, we see that 40% of SMEs state that they use or plan to use digitalization tools. And on the other hand, we also have in the study uh, that 49% of SMEs believe that digitalization will increase their customer base in the local market. On the other hand, uh, we have also real-time uh, or real-life example with Digital Empowerment Initiative. It is a support mechanism that Krenschnik mentioned that was introduced by KSAV Support of Access. Uh, it, uh, within the first call that was one or two months ago, it aimed to support 18 companies and we received 170 or more than 170 applications. Uh, so let me conclude by saying that uh, the focus in supporting the private sector to overcome the impacts of the COVID-19 crisis should be in provision of digitalization services. Donors and governments um, uh, can achieve through support of digitalization services uh, a more sustainable private sector development, can enable the companies uh, to adapt to the new reality and can make them fit for the digital age. Uh, in this regard, mechanisms like Digital Environment Initiative uh, will have to get a greater intention from the government and also donors. Uh, the mechanism as it is now can support only a limited number of companies due to budgetary uh, restrictions. However, with additional financial support from other uh, government institutions and donors, uh, it could have a greater outreach and enable a uh, significant digital transformation of the private sector in Kosovo. Thank you. Thank you, Hans. Uh, um, we also have heard that uh, uh, the need for, for consulting services is there and uh, it, um, there is a necessity to, to offer more consulting services to, to, to the businesses in Kosovo. So a very uh, sh quick question I ask you please for a short answer. Yes. What no. do you think are uh, the, um, from the point of view from your point of view as a consultant, what, what kind of impact is all this having on, on the consulting industry? Yeah. Okay, basically, the consulting industry has also experienced a negative uh, impact from the crisis. We don't have any figures in Kosovo how much this impact was, but uh, globally, uh, studies reveal that uh, like the global industri uh, consulting industry has shrunk by some 25 to 30%. 
uh, what is clear now is that uh, demand for consulting services that were for like projects for growth, uh, investment projects have been stopped or postponed. We have seen also from the study that 24% of the companies have declared that they have stopped this investment project. So, so there has been a shift toward uh, consulting services uh, in two topics. Uh, first one is uh, in supporting companies to deal with the negative effects of the crisis or so restructuring, etc. And the other is digitalization. Uh, so we see a trend towards uh, uh, demanding digitalization services. And in this regard, uh, uh, it has imposed also a need on the consultant side, so they have to develop digitalization skills. Uh, so, uh, as Kosovo as a consulting market, in order to, to be able to meet the market demand that is coming in the digitalization area, we would need to upgrade the uh, skills of the current consultants uh, in terms of digitalization, but also build new digitalization consultants. Here, just to mention that we as a project have had uh, cooperation with BCC, we have supported BCC uh, together with an Austrian partner in introducing digital certifications for local consultants. So we have also then certified or helped BCC to certify 28 consultants. And with that mechanism in place, we have also the infrastructure that is needed to do this upgrade that will be required by the market. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Hamas. Um, digitalization, a big password. Uh, you know the, the the main topic uh, since uh, especially since uh, COVID has started. Uh, Durim, um, in smaller markets uh, like Kosovo, what do you think are the main constraints for 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 the digital transformation of of uh, private sector, especially of micro, small, and medium enterprises? Uh, thank you, Quentin, for this very specific uh, question. Uh, for all participants and for all that are following us through uh, social media, just to inform you that um, by the end of the last year, so before pandemic crisis, we conducted a market assessment, which one of the goals, market assessment on digitalization needs of SMEs, one of the goals is to assess which are the market constraints in terms of digital transformation of local MSMEs. Uh, if we compare those data with the data that have been presented now by Thomas, so data before pandemic and after pandemic, we see that more or less market constraints uh, are the same. So, uh, most concerning market constraint that SMEs uh, face in Kosovo is the low awareness on the first usage and the second benefits of the digital tool. As a result, the perceived cost of adoption of digital tool then is high. Uh, on the other hand, there is a lack of interest of domestic digital service provider, providers to offer service, uh, services locally. And uh, this is very concerning, especially if we see that if we reflect on marginalized micro companies with a low budget for uh, involving into digital transformation, transformation. So these companies are not, uh, uh, digital service providers are not really interested to work with the marginalized and micro uh, companies that have lower budget, uh, budget availability to finance uh, digital transformation. So that's why uh, we have stepped in and built a mechanism that will try to address uh, those uh, market constraints. If, I, uh, if I'm allowed to reflect on one very important percentage of data that uh, Thomas has presented, we have noticed that 6% of the survey companies engaged into the digital transformation due to pandemic crisis. Uh, although this result might look very low in percentage, but if we transform this into the real number, then we see that around three to 4,000 companies have uh, entered the digital transformation just because of the pandemic crisis. And this is not a low number. Uh, uh, comparing to the supply of local digital uh, digital service companies. So uh, I would say, it is my personal opinion, that during pandemic crisis, businesses realize that digital tools can help them overcome uh, the economic lockdown and survive and avoid the closure. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, Durim. Uh, and, and finally, uh, it was mentioned uh, quite a few times, uh, the Digital Empowerment Initiative as a tool of this project and of KESA to help uh, digital transformation. Can you just tell us in a few words, what was the market reaction to that? 
Yes, uh, just to wrap up uh, about the Digital Empowerment in Initiative, it's a supporting mechanism built by Kiesa and our, uh, with the support of our project, aiming to address the market failures that I have mentioned uh, before. Uh, the market reaction when we have uh, all launched the first call for application was very surprising. Uh, we uh, received around 180 uh, application and we had budget availability to support only 18 from uh, from them. Uh, in terms of services that they have requested, mostly uh, the demand was for two specific services, digital marketing and uh, e-commerce. Um, on the other hand, I'm happy to announce here and as Kreshnik also mentioned that during November we'll be launching the second call for applications of course, with some improvements and lessons learned from the first call, and be able to meet the demand from the market for supporting the digital transformation of uh, MSMs. Thank you very much, uh, Durim. You see, I've changed my background screen just to remind you that we, you are now part of the virtual business forum of the first episode that. Uh, is dealing with the uh, digital with uh, the impact of COVID-19 on private sector and digitalization in Kosovo, and we have seen a uh, uh, we have seen uh, the results of uh, of a study uh, which um, uh, shows what the impact of the pandemic uh, is in in has been in Kosovo. Uh, it is indeed a severe impact on the private sector. Uh, we have seen some very disturbing figures. Uh, for example, sales are massively decreasing, employment is decreasing. Uh, there are no expectations of a speedy recovery. Uh, small and medium enterprises are focusing on reducing costs and basically on a naked survival. And there is uh, a need for uh, providing support to SMEs in order to, to, to overcome this crisis. So uh, let's hope that our institutions and decision makers um, see this, uh, as we said, this crisis as a chance. Uh, they hear this call and respond accordingly. And let's not forget that the pandemic isn't over yet, uh, which means that the situation uh, can worsen in the upcoming weeks and months if, if, if there, there are no uh, further uh, measures uh, taken. So uh, this was our first virtual business forum. Uh, thank you very much to everyone who joined. Uh, thank you to the panelists for their inputs and for their contribution. Um, I hope to see you soon in the next episode of the virtual business forum. Thank you very much and have a nice day.